Hello everyone, my name is Emmeline Jones and I am an anthropology major here at University of California, Berkeley. Today, I will be presenting my project on comparative primate cognition of red-tailed monkeys, ring-tailed and crowned lemurs. 63 million years ago, lemurs were the first living primates to branch off and evolve, making them the oldest superfamily of primates in the world. Because of this ancient origin, long before monkeys or apes evolved, it is often assumed that lemurs must be less cognitively advanced and capable than their more modern cousins. For my project, I sought to investigate this assumption through the observational analysis and testing of red-tailed monkeys and ring-tailed and crowned lemurs at the Oakland Zoo. In this image, we see the relationships between major primate families. And looking at this line here, you can see just how much older lemurs are compared to everyone else. Let's first define cognition. Cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. Tons of research has been done on the cognitive abilities of apes and old world monkeys, while lemurs have had the very least amount of research on their abilities out of any primate. However, more recent research with lemurs has shown them to be just as cognitively capable in most cognitive tasks as old world monkeys. This graph shows the level of success by species on the primate cognition test battery. This is a collection of tests sorted into two categories to measure their abilities and intelligence in each field. Here to the right, we see the measure of success for three species of lemur, ruffed lemurs, ring-tailed lemurs, and mouse lemurs. What is really interesting is that in their social domain, they performed right up there with everyone else. Lemurs have also shown to be capable of social learning, which is theorized to have led to humans and other great apes' remarkable cognitive advances. In the physical domain though, lemurs do have limitations, such as a lack of color vision and precision grip, characteristic of many other primates. So a challenge to researching lemurs is how to accurately test animals on the same subject matter that have different physical abilities from each other. Also, a newer advancement in animal research is to study animals in the social setting, which gives more accurate results. Primates are highly social creatures, so removing them from their environment and then testing them alone will give you a faulty picture of that animal's capabilities. These are two major factors that I kept in mind when designing my project. So why is research like this important? As lemurs are the most ancient living primates, they provide us with an excellent model of what those very first primates, our ancestors, would have been like. Studying them can give us insight into how primates and humans evolved our physical characteristics and behavior. Since most research of primate behavior has focused on apes and monkeys, comparing lemurs' lesser known cognitive abilities with these well-studied primates like old world monkeys can open up our eyes to the minds and worlds of these primeval social primates. The more we learn about these animals, the more we can better aid in their conservation and improve their lives in captivity. My research design looked at when presented with two different types of boxes, blue containing treats and yellow not containing treats, how do the animals interact with them? Do their interactions with the boxes change over time? And after a period of absence from the boxes, how quick are they to engage with them again? And does it appear that they learn and remember which boxes contain treats? I conducted my project in two phases. Phase one was four days of observation for one hour with the boxes, an interphase break of 18 days of absence from the boxes, and then phase two, again, four days of observation of the animals with the boxes for one hour. Factors measured throughout the course of this study included how many interactions with blue boxes, how many interactions with yellow boxes, and when these interactions occurred. My main research question was, do red-tailed monkeys perform better on this test than lemurs since they are more closely related to humans and apes? Or do lemurs perform better on this test? Or do the lemurs and red-tailed monkeys perform about the same as shown in the few newer research? My study participants were all animals living at the Oakland Zoo, four red-tailed monkeys, four ring-tailed lemurs, and two crown lemurs. The two groups had almost the same sexes and familiar relationships, and as well as being of similar size, these animals made for a good comparison to one another.
Now a little background on where these species live in the wild. Red-tailed monkeys are distributed throughout the central part of Africa. Ring-tailed lemurs are distributed in the southern areas of Madagascar, with crown lemurs being distributed at the very northern tip of Madagascar. Here I've pulled two random clips of the monkeys and lemurs performing on the actual test. In order to make it fair to the lemurs against the more dexterous monkeys, which means that their hands are more capable, the tabs of the box lids were left untucked for the lemurs. Also, as most lemurs are red-green colorblind, I painted the boxes blue and yellow using non-toxic Crayola paint. It was later pointed out to me that the boxes were in fact cow colors, so go bears. As for the results, in phase one, I observed overall more interest in the blue boxes than the yellow boxes over time for both groups. However, frequently the yellow boxes were opened and rifled through by both the lemurs and the monkeys. You can see the lemurs have far more interactions with the boxes, which could be due to their better sense of smell and or the fact that there are more lemurs than monkeys in this study. Overall, everyone was super excited to have the boxes for phase one and the monkeys especially enjoyed shredding them. For phase two, they clearly remembered interacting with the boxes from phase one and were far less excited about them as they were no longer novel. The lemurs especially seemed disappointed on day one. However, they were all much quicker to open the boxes than in phase one. What was most exciting about phase two is that in my observations, I witnessed many, many instances of an animal looking between a yellow and a blue box and then choosing to go over to the blue box. It was fun for the zoo guests to witness this too, as they would excitedly exclaim over the animal's wise decision. Also in phase two, hardly any of the yellow boxes were opened in my hour of observation time, even if they were examined. And the monkeys did not shred any of the yellow boxes as they did in phase one. To me, this is evidence of their memory and learning and between the lemurs and monkeys, I saw no major differences in this area. So although lemurs are the most ancient living primates, they performed just as well as more modern species like red-tailed monkeys in many cognitive tasks as shown in newer research and in my own. Therefore, we must be careful not to bring a human ape-centric bias to our research. There are over a hundred species of lemur alive today, all only living wild in Madagascar and all critically endangered. In fact, lemurs are the most endangered of all primates. As I mentioned, lemurs are the closest living model to those very first primates. And for that reason, along with many others, are a valuable resource to anthropologists and scientists, as well as just being ridiculously amazing and cute. I have so much more I can do with this data and it will be compiled into my senior thesis. This fall, I will also be interning at the Oakland Zoo to continue working with the lemurs. I would like to thank the SURF program for this wonderful opportunity, as well as my fantastic mentors, Terrence Deacon and Trent Trombley. And a huge shout out to the Oakland Zoo staff that helped facilitate this project for me. So here is a slide of some of my sources, including a lovely picture of one of the lemurs I took at the Oakland Zoo. And this is the slide I made for Q&A. And I'll just say here, if you're looking for ways to help lemurs conservation, the Duke Lemur Center is a great place to donate to. They do a lot of on the ground work in Madagascar, as well as breeding efforts and other fundraising efforts to conserve the species. The Oakland Zoo is also a super wonderful place if you would like to visit and see these animals in real life. <laughs> Also, I can just put in one more fun tidbit about lemurs compared to red-tailed monkeys. So most all lemurs, I think, save for one species, are matriarchal, which means that the females are the leaders and the dominant ones in charge. Red-tailed monkeys, are the, on the other hand, are patriarchal, which means that the males are the leaders and are the dominant ones. So something that I did notice between these red-tailed monkeys and these lemurs is that although they have pretty much the same familial makeup, so for the lemurs, it was a mom and her two daughters, and then one unrelated male. Whereas for the red-tailed monkeys, it was also a mom and her two daughters and one unrelated male. 
was that the lemurs were far more prone to sharing with one another, whereas the monkeys were not as prone to sharing. I saw a lot of instances of a monkey picking up a box and then jumping away with it. And they really didn't share as much as the lemurs did, which frequently I would have all three or sometimes all four of the lemurs foraging at one box. And although there were squabbles and the male often gets kicked off, which you might've seen earlier, they do end up sharing a lot. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching. And again, this was a fellowship award um, that I got from my school, University of California at Berkeley through the Summer Undergraduate Research Fund and Fellowship. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this.